Hey guys, Table here. Today we got a look at the Nikolai One. I got Kedrov on the screen, Cunningham, playing around with Cunningham, testing him out. Not 100% sure if he need him yet. I never really had him on this build, but I am testing him out uh, just because once you hit that flad at tier 7, it gets a little wonky with the aim. So anyway, uh, that's the build for this game. Before we get into the game, though, I want to go over the status of where we're at with this giveaway. Now, if we hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel, which is a very real possibility, I think we're actually getting fairly close here, then we'll be doing some sort of big time giveaway. Probably a stream will be the main event, uh, but I got some ships lined up to be given away. We're gonna have tier fours, tier fives, tier sixes. So I think we're gonna have some pretty good prizes and I got a lot of runner up prizes too. So there's gonna be opportunities to get a uh, giveaway going on Twitter, probably on the Discord, almost certainly in the Discord, maybe one will for the members of the channel. So we'll see exactly how it's gonna pan out, but for sure the bulk of them are gonna be for subscribers of the YouTube channel. That's kind of what we're celebrating here. So if you are subscribed, you'll be able to keep up with that. That hopefully will be coming relatively soon. We'll see exactly how long it takes. All right, so jumping into the game here, we got uh, Domination Mode, Archipelago, Nikolai 1, you know, very well armored in the front, very well armored in the back as well. These Russians, I th I'm trying to think if there's many battleships, if any, that have like significantly less armor in the back than the front. Maybe there is, you know, of course we don't have armor view. I am seeing a lot of you guys start to talk about armor view in the game suggestions, by the way, and this is a great development. Keep that up. Let's stop begging for goofball things and uh, keep up. I don't want be polite about it. I don't want to call it pressure necessarily, but keep reminding them that that is something that the community wants because once we can understand the armor schemes on these ships, we can defend ourselves better and we can attack better by knowing exactly where to shoot. Uh, yes, we got Boots Normandy on my Discord. Spends a lot of time making uh, armor views for us, but that takes them a lot of work and course the distribution of the knowledge would be far greater if it was actually in game as opposed to just the people on my discord and reddit i think he posts on there too so you know anyway keep that up but getting back to what i was talking about armor in general you can just assume that the ships are as armored in the back as in the front and therefore that allows you to turn away from these ships so basically i used to make a lot of replays about this early in the game uh life history you know especially when tier 7 spawned in very quickly you know i would talk about basically turning right off the bat now how it works you have to understand where on each map the conflicts generally take place and then turn around so that that area will be within your range uh once the enemy starts popping up but from there if you're facing away from them you can disengage so if the he's raining in rather than throw up your hands and say no neptune's beard i'm getting he spammed yet again now you can just disengage and then get out of there and then uh, reposition and continue to affect the match. So I'll be trying to talk about that topic a little bit more. Just a little bit of, uh, you know, helpful advice, hopefully, for Battleship players who are getting frustrated. But, what you know, this one is... He gone! This one is, by nature, a nose-in type of a Battleship because of those turrets flipping around the front of the ship so keep that in mind not all the russians are like that i think actually most of them have different schemes in terms of how the turrets rotate but this one it just plays better if you kind of park nose in oh yeah i forgot about this guy check the guy all the way on the white line all the way north there and this guy's like professional dewey buffer you know he's not going just for level 16 he's actually going for legendary status so let's hope that position is not intentional. Maybe he's just not playing with two hands on the keys, if you get my drift. Uh, but anyway, that's going to be a problem here because we're going to have destroyers kind of rushing us here. They're noticing that I'm kind of in the front over here, and they're kind of getting the sense that there's not anything really screening for torps in front of me. And that's an important thing to be kind of aware of as a destroyer player. Look for those opportunities. You know, I... I'm always a little, I don't know if derisive is the right word, but, you know, I kind of rip on players for being too eager to torp battleships that are in the back, but I'm not really, yeah, I'm kind of in the back, but I'm kind of not all the way behind the action here. I'm the only one that's really kind of 
putting a lot of pressure on the side at the moment here. So getting rid of me would be much more important. You know, we got the uh, the cruiser all the way up to the north who, even if he was playing, couldn't hit anything. And then we got the guy behind me. So, you know, clearing the side, taking me out is going to go a long way. And this is a very sturdy battleship. So if the destroyers can get in there, torp me, that's going to save these other battleships and cruisers a lot of heartache because not only is this thing very well armored when angled but you can see there's basically no superstructure so it's very hard to damage even with he salvos but there we discharged the he that we had loaded for one of these destroyers uh onto the orion because they were not being spotted by anyone but now that this guy's popped up we're going to demonstrate how quick these guns flip over here and how the guns turn from one side to the other is always important and it kind of influences how it's a main part of how each ship should be kind of preferentially be played. You know, it's if some guns just naturally work better when you're facing rearward, some of them naturally uh, kind of perform better when you're facing forward, like this one. So that's an important part of learning how any new ship that you come across works. Number one, firing angles. Which side, you know, forward or backward, can I angle more steeply at while getting a lot of the guns on target and then number two which way do they rotate and that'll inform you kind of which way you would prefer to be facing anyway uh we're trying to dodge some of these torps over here we're trying to deal with the orion as well uh who's kind of has access to the broadside i'm actually not really sure why i'm turned like this at this moment this would be a mistake unless i miss something in the replay here i'm trying to get some shots on these two destroyers the other one's this v170 which is a very hard ship to hit this these tier two and three german destroyers are some of the hardest ships in the game to hit just because they're the size of like a fishing boat you know like a not even a commercial fishing boat but like some fishing boat you'd see out on the lake or whatever <laughs> But this moment's kind of instructive. I mean, battleship players, a lot of them, like the destroyers are addicted to torping battleships. For some reason, battleships are addicted to only shooting other battleships. Maybe they think, oh, I gotta go for big damage to be effective or whatever. But in this situation, number one, nobody's gonna stop these destroyers from hunting me down. So it's my responsibility to defend myself in that manner. But number two, as we talk about all the time here, when you have shots of destroyers, reasonable shots i'm not talking about a 25 kilometer shot with the bismarck with celiacs you know <laughs> as your commander maybe pass up that shot okay but reasonable shots that you have the ability to potentially hit go ahead and take those and if you're new to the game or you're still working on your aim and you're thinking to yourself well i'm not very good at shooting those destroyers then you need to be taking more than you're comfortable with you need to be pushing yourself trying to figure out exactly how to aim those guns. Of course, we got plenty of videos on this channel to help you with that if you need help with aiming. Uh, a lot of them are in the beginners, beginners series of the game, or the beginners series videos of the channel, that is. But anyway, you know, we can see here we're still dealing with the destroyers. Yeah, though we're kind of not ideally, you know, we don't want to be dealing with these V-170s, but we're dealing with them, you know. Again, nobody's... You can see the dude up north is still up north. He's not going to help us. <laughs> the other guys, they're, uh, they're dealing with their own things. We're down a ship. We're actually closing the gap in terms of ship count. In terms of score, though, check out the caps. And you can say you can look at my game and be like, you've been playing behind the cap the entire game. And I criticize that when that happens. And that's rightfully uh, pointed out. But what the counter, why I'm behind it is that we have no ability. I can't push into the cap when there's two unspotted destroyers defending it. Okay, so I'm trying to get the side cleared as quickly as possible so we can get on the cap. The problem, when you're going to have problem in domination mode games, is when nobody on your team is really aggressively trying to push the temple forward. They're just content to sit back and uh, let the enemy take these points you know you're gonna have problems so not only are we down ships but we're down points that means we pretty much have to go walls to the wall and try and kill these guys at this point in time there's no way we're gonna make up the score so you need to be able to understand that when it happens it's not preferable you'd always like to have multiple ways available to you to win the game but sometimes the circumstances either due to your own play or your team's collective play or the play the aggressive play of the enemies even just outplaying you 
Sometimes the circumstances are going to dictate, okay, you got to kill everyone on the team. Or sometimes it's going to say you got to pretty much cap. You're not going to be able to kill uh, six ships when you only have one or two left on your team. So maybe we need to get on the base or something like that. So always be checking the situation of the game. Understand what do I got to do to win and then pursue that objective. Alright, so our AFK player's back. Either his internet uh, got reconnected or he's done with whatever he was working on. But the situation here is thus. We got a relatively high health, even potentially full health Wyoming that we're kind of aimed at right about there. And then there you got the rest of their team, which looks like they're pretty much low health and they're all kind of clustered. So you can see on the map there and on the screen, we're angled at the group of three. And that's going to protect us primarily from the majority of those shots. I guess one of them's a Kira, but we got a couple battleships scattered over there. And then the Wyoming over there. We're getting him a little bit of a broadside, and we need to be very careful. He can potentially kill us. Now, the Wyoming's not the most accurate ship known to man, but if he does connect, and it looks like he's probably taking the shot at us there, that could be dangerous. You know, these Russian battleships, if you get shot in the side, that's a problem. What I'm trying to do is steam forward as quick as possible. Number one, close the gap on these guys because I'm going to have the advantage the closer I get to those guys, uh, assuming we don't get torped by the Kirov. But I also want to get some of these islands. You can see there's an island by that Wyoming. There's also an island that I'm kind of going towards here near me. And utilizing those, I can hopefully cut off the ability of that Wyoming to shoot me in the broadside long enough to uh, you know, absorb the shots from these guys that might be coming my way, kill them, and then reposition my ship at the Wyoming, take him out. First up here, though, we got Southern Wyoming popping up. He gets a little bit of damage there into the nose section, but flashes the broadside there, and whew, we give him a little bit of a tap there. Yeah, he's getting low now. This is a very risky play here. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm abandoning him, but... You can see where that Wyoming, the North Wyoming, is on the map. Now, he does have a juicy shot into my side at this point in time. And I'm going to get very nervous. I'm going to ping, ping, ping. Uh, hope to God, well, the Wyoming did get a shot off. So, you know, basically in my mind, I'm like, I got to angle toward that guy. He's the bigger threat. So I'm hoping that my team will kill that guy and they do pull the trigger. You always want to be scanning around. Lock your guns. Put on gun lock, you know. Lock your guns, then scan the enemy, scan your own team, check their health, look for those low health targets. So luckily my team spotted the ability to get rid of that ship, took care of them, because I needed to begin angling. Right now I'm kind of pointed halfway between the Wyoming to the north. We're getting about a 45 degree angle on that one. Not perfect, he can still damage us there, but better than flat broadside. And then we're kind of pointed still at that other battleship that's coming around the island. Once I confirmed which way that guy's going, I can actually get the ship's nose positioned halfway between those two. I think now I'm just noticing that ship. So you can see we're going to start turning to the right a little bit. We want to steepen the angle up as much as possible. This Wyoming's confirming, you know, due to his play that he's interested in killing us. So he should probably be considered the primary threat. Zooming in, we can see his guns are still uh, pointed at us. And there's, of course, more shots. So... Had we been broadside there, that probably would have been the end. I'd still like to tighten up that angle. But this ship over here, Koenig, is also shooting at us. So in this situation, when you got two ships spread out shooting at you, you kind of have to just go nose in halfway between each of them. That'll give you the best possible angle. This is assuming both have relatively uh, equal guns in terms of their danger to you. If you got one Mutsuki... And the other one's a Yamato. Well, in that case, yeah, angle at the Yamato, most likely. <laughs> so, Although you might have to be cautious with the Mutsuki's Torps, which might require you to angle towards that. So maybe that wasn't even the best example, but just in terms of the guns, I was trying to come up with the most ridiculous analogy possible. Anyway, uh, we've gotten him down now, and we've gone from, I think it was a two-ship deficit was our biggest drop, down three caps to zero. We got a cap back. Uh, but score, still, even if we got all the caps, we're not going to win on score. So we need to kill this guy. This is just dumb right here, watching this back. This drives me insane. Uh, number one, if you're backing up and you're trying to gain ground, i got to be turning as I'm doing now. But i got to be... I should be angled my ass end towards that guy if I want to gain any ground on him. Number two, go to where the ships are going to, not where they were. What I'm trying to do is basically get this shot off here. I wanted to get this Kraken... 
before my teammates got them. And I figured I might have just a slightly better chance doing it by backing up. But you can see we only got like one shell through there. And by the time we just stop and go forward and do what we should have done earlier, which would have given us a very easy shot and we would have gotten the Kraken and kind of put the icing on this very juicy game. Uh, we just demonstrated how goofy you look when you go to where ships were rather than where they're going. So always go to where they're going. So let's look at the Nikolai Eye. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. Uh, new to the channel or if you're interested in uh, the giveaways, being involved with those, got to be subscribed to the channel. So hit that sub button if you're interested. Uh, questions, comments, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you guys and we'll see y'all later. All right, peace.